Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and this is my channel, Vitcha. In this video, I'm joined by friend and fellow YouTuber, Bife. Tell everyone what we're going to be working on today, Bife. In this video, we're going to be covering 10 things you don't know that inspired Destiny. Yeah, and we're not going to cover the really easy stuff, like the Titans being based off the Spartans of Halo, the connections easily drawn between the enemy names like Minotaur, Phalanx, and their various relations to the same titles of real world history, or anything of the sort. No, we've chosen the 10 most interesting and unique inspirations that went into making this awesome game. That's right, we're going to share them with you. So, without further ado, let's get started. And what better way to start than by going back to 1997 to take a look at one of Bungie's earliest games, a little tactical RTS called Myth The Fallen Lords. Oh, yeah, just look at those textures. Beautiful. Anyway, the story of Myth is based around the forces of light and dark, which sequentially rule the universe in thousand year cycles, and this has repeated since before recorded history. The start and end of each cycle is personified by the arrival of a figure known as the Leveler. The problem is, each new Leveler inhabits the body of the hero who defeated him in the previous cycle. Additionally, similar to the way the Traveler of Destiny brought about an age of prosperity to mankind known as the Golden Age, which was then followed by the Collapse and subsequent Dark Age, in Myth 2, after each cycle, a new Leveler ushers in a Golden Age of Peace and Prosperity but only before falling to darkness in the coming cycle. The Fallen Lords also have a more direct connection to the Fallen Race in Destiny. While they all have varying levels of importance and power, it's worth noting that there are five major Fallen Houses, the Devils, Kings, Winter, Wolves and Exile, and five Fallen Lords fighting humanity in myth. It's also worth noting that the armies that battle against the Fallen Lords are led by a council of sorcerer generals known as the Nine. It all started when the Nine learned that Ulrich had been captured by the Deceiver and his army decimated. For the next one we're going to talk about a longtime science fiction Japanese artist and sculptor Kao Yokoyama. Since the 80s Kao has been creating a series dubbed Machine Krieger or Makai. It's somewhat of a cult classic as the intellectual property has for the most part stayed within the world of miniatures and models, never really breaking out into the manga or anime industry which is much more popular and likely to make its way to the west. Regardless, the people at Bungie were known for absorbing inspirations from Yokoyama's work, specifically in the design of the Fallen and their machinery. Both the Fallen and Kao's machine and Krieger concepts share rounded body designs with throwbacks to World War II heavy war machines. For those that hadn't gathered or had somehow been playing Destiny from under a rock, Destiny is set within the bounds of our own solar system. And within our own solar system, there are three major spacefaring nations. The USA, China, and the Russian Federation. Destiny also subtly hints at the union of these spacefaring nations in the future. In the tower, for example, directions scribed in the wall are written in all three languages. Also, the old Moon Accelerator, which was constructed to launch supplies down the rail out into space, is covered in Mandarin script. This points to the Chinese Space Agency's early Moon expansions in the early 21st century. And no, before someone says it, I'm not talking about real world. I'm talking about Destiny's timeline. In reality, the only humans to ever visit the Moon are from the USA. Because... Mark. It's also worth noting that American space explorers are known as astronauts, Russian space explorers are known as cosmonauts, and Chinese space explorers are known as taikonauts, but we'll cover taikonauts and their significance in Destiny more in a different topic. On a slightly different note of unexplored regions of space, there's a very serious amount of inspiration that's been taken from space exploration and applied to the reef. We see names within the game's weapons, such as the Palace Regime and Vestian Dynasty, and in the Grimoire we see references to a variety of other names, such as Ceres, Amethyst, Cybel, and Eos. All of these names are directly taken from current maps of the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, where the Reef is located. The Reef is now open to you. On that note, let's talk about some of the various aspects that inspired the planets and locations in Destiny. First off, let's start with some fictional inspirations. The walls surrounding the Cosmodrome, for example, were inspired by the G.I. Joe Headquarters Command Center. Also, the Shattered Coast on Venus was inspired by the movie poster images of Inception, where the city is crumbling into the ocean. 
and some of the high vases filled with black liquid were thought to be inspired by Prometheus, Ridley Scott's prequel to Alien. But some of the locations that inspired the detailed worlds of Destiny are actually found in real life. For instance, the stalagmite fields found on Venus were inspired by the Yosemite Caves in California. And finally, Crownhauser, a building in Cologne, Germany, inspired various aspects of the Vex's gravity-defying architecture. You know what else defies logic and gravity? The Traveler. Have you ever wondered why the Traveler is round and floating in space? There's a wide variety of theories out there. Some people are convinced the Traveler contains a world within its walls, while Grimoire states that the Traveler is a consciousness unto itself and will eventually resurface to battle the darkness. However, when one looks into Bungie's common sources of inspiration, the game developers often turn to ancient mythology. And one myth in particular can be found across a multitude of cultures. It can be found in Egyptian, Polynesian, Greek, Finnish, Chinese, and Vedic mythology. This myth pertains to the nature of creation itself. The myth references what is known as the World Egg, or Cosmic Egg. In this myth, the World Egg is the source of all creation. Generally, the World Egg is a beginning of some sort. And the universe, or some primordial being, comes into existence by hatching from the egg. These legends of cosmic eggs, of course, can be directly connected to the actions of the Traveler during the start of the Golden Age. The terraforming of the planets is a sign of the cosmic egg. It even shares a similar appearance to the world egg. And perhaps there's something inside the Traveler. Also, very much in the same way, the cosmic egg hatches, revealing the primordial creature inside. Perhaps this is why later, when the darkness is pressing to consume humanity, the Traveler is now cracked and open. Perhaps the Traveler hatched, so to speak, and out came the primordial being, the darkness. Now speaking of darkness, let's talk about Dark Souls. Since its release and popularization in 2011, the medieval fantasy RPG Dark Souls has become one of the most influential games within the games industry. As a matter of fact, there's many nods to From Software's RPG within Destiny itself. For one, Eris can be seen holding her arms up and out into the air. This pose is nearly identical to the Praise the Sun gesture from Dark Souls, which has become an icon representative of the Souls franchise. In fact, one of the perks on the Heart of Praxic Fire chess piece is named Praise the Sun, and the icon depicts angled hands on each side of the sun just like the gesture itself. But that's not all, there's also somewhat subtle nods to the lore of Dark Souls as well found within Destiny. The first is from the Ghost Angel Cloak which has an item description that reads, We are an army of chosen dead. Any Souls fan will notice the correlation as the player in Dark Souls is labeled as the chosen undead. Additionally, when entering the first trial of the Crota's End Raid, your objective reads, Traverse the Abyss. This is a reference to Knight Artorias from Dark Souls who entered the Abyss to fight a creature named Manus. The item description and ability of Artorias' ring enables your character to traverse the Abyss, as he was the only warrior capable. Finally, the Hunter Exotic Helm Acleophage Symbiote is another reference to Dark Souls. When inspected, the helm can be seen pulsating with what appears to be some type of parasite attached to the mask. And the item description reads, They told me it would eat away my thoughts and leave me full of light. This description and item is a direct connection to the character Solaire from Dark Souls, as he was in search of a light, and in one particular outcome, during his journey finds a parasitic helm called the Sunlight Maggot, which eats away at his thoughts and drove him insane, instead of filling him with the light that he sought. So, you remember that cosmic egg craziness? Now, call me a conspiracy theorist, but this rabbit hole does go deeper. In Egyptian mythology, there's a god known as Khonsu, which is the spirit of the moon. A god worshipped for many things, but notably, he's a deity who would be the guide of overnight travelers. Khonsu is also a figure that was worshipped in ancient Egyptian society at the presence of the full moon. The full moon is represented quite clearly by a silver disc, the depiction of Khonsu is clearly very similar to the Traveler, but even more amazingly, there's further links. Here are Khonsu's two forms, one human and one animal. Both of them have a silver disc above their head, similar in appearance to the Traveler. However, what's even stranger is that the Ibis of Khonsu's animal form is similar to the Falcon of Horus, who in Egyptian mythology is the son of Osiris. Sound familiar? Khonsu is also part of the Egyptian creation myth. He is the one who supposedly fertilized the world egg and breathed life into the world, very much like the Traveler did at the dawn of the Golden Age. 
when the planets were terraformed. But the most convincing piece of evidence is that Khonsu is referred to in Egyptian mythology as the maker of men's destinies. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. For the next one, we're going to check out a few sci-fi films that inspired Destiny. But to do so, we need to take a look at Christopher Barrett, the art director of Destiny. Christopher Barrett started at Bungie in 1999. After contributing to Myth 2, he would later become an instrumental artist on Halo, environmental art director for Halo 2 and 3, and later became the art director of Destiny. In an interview with Polygon at GDC, Barrett went on to say that film played a large role in the inspiration of Destiny aesthetically. He was quoted saying that Andrei Tarkovsky, the director of Solaris and Stalker, was a great inspiration in the creation of Destiny. Not only this, but in the attempt to not take things too seriously, Terry Gilliam, and specifically his film Time Bandits, would influence Bungie's new IP as well. For the next topic, we're going to talk about Marathon, yet another game from the ghost of Bungie's gaming past. Marathon the game is actually set within the UESC Marathon, a ship supporting the colonization efforts of a planet. But the main connections within the plot are drawn from the reoccurring theme of AIs going rampant, much like the War Mines of Destiny. You see, at the start of Marathon you find there are three AIs maintaining the ship, namely Tycho, much like those Tychonauts we were talking about earlier, Leela, and Dorandal. Leela is the only fully functional AI at the start of the game, but in the early stages it's quickly discovered that the AI Dorandal is still partially active and has gone rampant. Even going as far as to communicate with the Four, the aliens that are attacking the Marathon, Durandal then proceeds to work against you and defies the very duties that he was specifically made to fulfill. Similarly, the War Minds of Destiny, Rasputin in particular, is known to be responsible for the protection of Earth during the Golden Age and the Collapse. Yet, Rasputin too goes rampant and abandons his duties to the people of Earth, just as the AI Durandal abandoned his duties to the inhabitants of the Marathon. However, it's Durandal that eventually helps turn the tide of the battle for the Marathon, and similarly, the AI Rasputin has been quoted in the Grimoire to fire upon enemy forces, Vex and Cabal in particular, that invade our worlds once he's connected to the rest of the solar system through the Astronomic Array from Mission 5. No matter what way you look at it, the position of both rogue AIs is often a questionable one, but the similarities between the two games are unmistakable. Alright, for the last one it goes without saying that many weapons of Destiny are completely fantastical and utterly based in science fiction. Super Good Advice, for example, has an AI in the gun which uses smart bullets to return Miss Ammo back to the magazine. Or fusion rifles are the creation of stable, field-ready, energy-based weapons, something far beyond our wildest current scientific implementations. But many of the weapons are based in reality, or inspired by legends themselves. The rocket launcher Truth, for instance, bears a striking resemblance to a modern-day rocket launcher which also seeks its target. This real-life anti-tank self-locking weapon is called the Javelin. Truth also shares a perk of the same name. Additionally, no matter what you call it, Galahorn, Gatlahorn, Yalahorn, or just simply Jellyhorn, this rocket launcher of doom draws its inspiration from Norse mythology. This horn of legend belonged to the god of dawn and light, Heimdall and its purpose was to warn the gods, a heralding of Ragnarok in the end of days. Turns out it heralds doom and destiny as well. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It really does help with searchability and goes a long way with the success of videos here on YouTube. It helped me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Also, please go check out My Name is Bife on YouTube. He makes new Destiny content almost every day. His PvP and weapon knowledge is second to none, and I definitely couldn't have made this video without him. So please go check him out. It's important to support other content creators here on YouTube. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one.